Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Or uh, excuse me, I should clarify. It's 2019, ya boy Zach. Uh, I'm saying that because I just had to tell 2017, ya boy Zach, to go just go around, walk around the block, go chill out. <laughs> you don't got you don't gotta have, have to go so hard in the paint on everything, buddy. Pace yourself. Uh, but anyway, this is Uncanny X Men number 16, government name 635. Uh, they brought this back. You would think if it says issue 16, it was brought back like 16 months ago, but they brought it back as, I believe, a weekly. Um, and they brought it back in a very strange way. There were multiple X books, and then they all let them end. And then they're like, we're bringing it back. The original Uncanny X-Men. And a crossover. And another crossover. And three more books that have Uncanny X-Men in the title. Yeah, okay, for modern Marvel, we will screw up every single thing um and then they started it with three three different authors on the main book now i don't mean a writer for the main story and two backups written by two other writers i mean just three people writing a oversized issue it was ridiculous uh so i roasted it and then uh people last couple weeks have been like hey are you going to check it out? Like, it's actually not bad. I was like, I oh, don't know, man. Almost every single thing I've seen by Matthew Rosenberg is n- is not good. So for people who don't know Matthew Rosenberg and you only need to have dipped out of comics for a few years to not know his name at all, not at all he wrote this comic called uh, Four Kids Walk Into a Bank. came out like three years ago. And then basically he was immediately working at Marvel and like a ridiculous amount. One of the things is they, they they grab people when they're very very junior in the industry, and they either rotate them in and out, or if they sign them to a contract, they sign you like fresh out the gate. You can't really claim, oh, you should pay me X amount, no pun intended, X amount per page because you don't have them following. You got no experience, so they sign them to these multi year contracts. They lock them in at this sub poverty. Uh, you know, page rate, and then the only way they can pay the rent uh, is if they write like four or five, six books uh, a month. The problem is that they're new, <laughs> so they're learning. So, yeah, you do get, you know, you do learn from experience, but they're not. The other thing is they're getting no guidance. When they're good, they're good, but then they're not good, and there's no consistency uh, at anything. So, um, uh, this one was good-ish, except for it wasn't, and that's what makes it so frustrating. So, uh, first of all, this is BS. A whole, like, wasted page, whatever. And then a whole page of just the people's faces. Um, although it's good that you say Wolvesbane, because any other person would reasonably expect that's Jean Grey, since you just brought her, brought her back, and that was a big deal. Um, so, uh, most of the X-Men are gone, presumed dead. Cyclops is back from the dead and he's the leader, but there's a whole bunch of shenanigans going on. And uh, Hope, who is Cable's daughter, which I believe makes her Cyclops' granddaughter, shot Cyclops in the eye. Uh, So now Cyclops is a Cyclops. That's the joke. Um, So anyway, we start off and we get, oh, flat shot. And, oh, somebody used a 3D model, but they didn't put it on the planes, and it doesn't match any of the... It's like some kind of optical illusion. Because, uh, see how we got this little armored vehicle right here? I'm pretty sure it's the one, or a similar one that, uh... Look how teeny tiny he is! He's like a little baby inside! But then, uh, Havoc is, like, resting... (laughs) Everything's wonky. So, uh, basically... One of the problems, so there were two problems that seemed like there were problems, and then if you finish, it's actually pretty good. Um, I actually missed out on the Cyclops' villain killing everyone, killing Xavier storyline that I think was started by Brian Michael uh, Bendis. I was uh, extremely poor and buying food with Coinstar vouchers, so that's my excuse for not reading that storyline. But they they say, they basically turned him into like, Osama bin Laden, like he was a terrorist and he was an extremist. Okay, that's redundant. Um, but, well, no, no, because you can be an extremist and not be a terrorist, but yeah, I guess all terrorists are extremists. Um, it's hard to be like a mild like terrorist or like 
we've got a plan to blow up the the box in the parking lot where you donate your old clothes. It's going to blow it to bits. Uh, <laughs> usually they shoot a little higher, no pun intended. Um, but anyway, uh, so it seems like he's that old hard-ass extremist. He basically talks about humans as like, it's them against us. What does he say? Uh, I just turned over my fellow mutants over to you with trust that you won't end up experimenting on on your uh, blah, what experimented on by your government so you're like ah, it just seems like he's the same guy and then ah, so many ads um and then we have like a really long conversation but then uh he basically says hey um so his brother havoc is kind of written like in the same kind of hard-ass way and but he's uh he says i want to listen to logan because logan won't just agree with me he'll he'll roast me so uh, then we get a 3d model of a guard tower and then we get a traced over photograph of two soldiers and a teeny teeny tiny is that a 30 caliber machine gun from world war ii wow all all the perspective is or the the sizes of everything are completely off because they're just using 3d models and then we get uh this is kind of funny so but then Scott seems to realize he's just acting the way he did before and he wants to change. So he goes, I'm stepping down as the leader of the X-Men. By the way, look at the Crackle TV series budget X-Men right here. Um, then we get this pretty awesome, uh, actually that's a really awesome drawing of um, Juggernaut. And then we get, oh, a bunch of 3D models. Wait, how come two soldiers, they had, what, they had like three rifles each? What the hell is going on? So then we get um, Magneto. And at first, it sounded like it was bad writing. Okay, spoilers, spoilers. It's not Magneto, it's Joseph, his clone. So he says, The mutant insurrection begins again now. That thing is a portent of your destruction. He is the chiming of a bell. The end of the time of man is nigh. For the brotherhood has come to make you pay for your actions against mutant kind. And you go, oh, that's really... Horny. That's like how super villains talked like in comics in the 70s. But we find out it's not Magneto, so that part works. Then we get the uh, we want to vote things. So they're, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna run the X-Men with no leader and they vote on things. Which is fine if you're like a charity that you know you uh put boxes in, in parking lots and people put their clothes in them. Yes, I'm looking at one of those right now. That's why I brought it up twice. Um, it doesn't work in any kind of tactical situation. That's why you have a chain of commands. So, you know, each person is technically only in charge of like three other people. You know, well, three or four. So, you know, like uh, platoon sergeant. And then there'll be four platoons. And they'll either be uh, two to three teams. Or, you know, uh, there'll be, excuse me, screwing that one up. Platoon sergeant for squads. Squads will have two to three teams, depending on what service you're in. And then the teams will have a, a TO for four people, but usually they're a little undermanned, so it'll be like three people. So, you know, you just say, hey, first squad go here, second squad go there. You know, third squad's in rever in uh, reserve. Um, the idea of you're, gonna, you're a tactical assault unit and you're going to do everything by voting is... Stupid. And that's a thing that an editor would say, hey, I get what you're doing. You're trying to make him not so much of an egomaniac. You want him to be more egalitarian, you know, uh, more, you know, about the people. That's cool. But this doesn't make any sense. That's when an editor and then, oh, my, are you ready for this? Where is it? So we get a cool shot of them in their uh, costumes, even though I don't think we see them in their costumes. Um, and then we, we actually get a pretty, pretty good fight. Um, uh, there's actually some, there's, one of my favorite bits is, uh, a bad guy throws, uh, the good guys, but then he hits the other bad guy and knocks his helmet off, and then, you know, he can be hit by a side blast. That was cool, gotta skip a couple pages for the copyright gods. Uh, here's what I'm talking about, editing, editing. Oh my gosh, it's so much dialogue, and the thing they say, and it just, it, they, but then, it's not just a lot of dialogue, but the problem is... It's a lot of dialogue to make the same, like, two points. And it's the same two points that have been made in very similar scenes a million trillion times. Now, back in the day, when you had that, 
you know, you had those Chris Claremont, you had that Fabian Nicieza, you had those Scott Lobdells. They had that snappy patter. They had that patois. They had, they were lyrical miracles. They could say the same thing for the 50th time, but they would say it in a new way. But, um, uh, Matthew Rosenberg, he's new ish at, at writing. And the way he, everyone talks in a paragraph and it's very bland. I hope you can all remember as they tighten the nooses around your necks, it was your inaction that tied those knots. We'd rather die fighting for a better world than live tearing one apart. Oh, the old Xavier idea, masquerade your cowardice as principles. I'm still in the same panel. I didn't just read like a page of dialogue. This has nothing to do with the... Oh, I, gotta, I gotta read it fast. This has nothing to do with the professor. He's gone along with so much of what we all cared about. This is about stepping out from under his shadow, from under anyone's shadow, and trying to make a better world. This is about giving ourselves a new chance to be better, to be leaders in our, in our place in the world. But he's not really Magneto, so nothing matters. Um, and then a uh, pretty nice one-hitter quitter over there by Cyclops. Uh, I'm gonna skip, like, the biggest surprise, but... Good. So usually by the time I get to the end, I'm angry <laughs> because the book's been a waste of time. It's been a ridiculous waste of money. And then they're always like yes, queening it up for themselves. But it ends on a good cliffhanger. And he says, what a cliffhanger. Stallone would be proud. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I see some good Will Portacio art. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd... Uh, <laughs> It's still Marvel, so I'm, the ink's still coming off of my hands. But um, overall, just good, good. I see improvement from uh, uh, Matthew Rosenberg. Uh, I've got to say, this price for a weekly is ridiculous. You're expecting people to pay $16 a month just to follow the X-Men storyline. Yes, they are getting more product, but you know you got to put that with you know comparative value. I think my Netflix just bumped up to like $12.99, and that's... Uh, what do you call it? That's, um, I probably watch an hour of it per day. It's a fantastic, you know, per minute of entertainment. It re it takes like six to seven minutes to read this. And you're getting, you know, for 20 minutes of entertainment per month, you're paying $16. It's, it's ridiculous. Weeklies should be two ninety nine. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everybody. Everyone given to the uh, GoFundMe and the Indiegogo, and I'll have uh, uh, more new comic reviews up tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.